Welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with Data Management for Oracle EPM, Loading Metadata. I'm Steve Beltramo with Interrel Consulting. In this video, I will show you how to perform a simple dimension load using data management. Data Management for Oracle EPM is a tool sometimes referred to as FDMEE Lite. You may be familiar with this tool for loading data, and now Oracle has released new functionality so that it can be used for loading metadata from flat files. Currently, the feature is available for PBCS, EPBCS, FCCS, and Oracle Tax Reporting Cloud. Supported dimension types are regular dimensions, custom dimensions, and smartless. The tool is based on the outline load utility, but it does not support all of the commands yet. For example, attributes are not yet supported as dimensions, but attribute assignments can be made as properties of their base dimensions. A tool such as data management can be quite useful for managing large dimensions, such as employees or entities. Also, it can load flat files from virtually any data source, and you can schedule the loads. The overall process to load metadata is as follows. First, you will need a dimension load file. Then you will go into data management and register your target application and any dimensions that you are going to load. Third, you will define the properties for the dimensions. Fourth, set a source system, in this case a flat file, and set up an import format, set up a location, and create a data load rule. Set the data load mappings, and then execute the data load rule. After the rule is finished, you can review, correct for any errors, and repeat if necessary. Most of these steps are really a one-time setup. Now let's walk through an example step-by-step. For your source data file, all you really need to load metadata is a member name and a parent. You should also include any properties that you want to specify. If unspecified, they will remain as existing. According to the documentation, new members will inherit unspecified properties from the parent as appropriate, so you may want to make sure to test out the behavior or simply load the properties. My file here is for the entity dimension and has the member name, parent name, member alias, and an attribute assignment identifying the geographic location of the entity member. From the cloud web interface, go to Navigator and open up Data Management. Go to the Setup tab. Under Register, select Target Application. From the Target Application Summary, click the green plus sign and add dimensions. Select a target application from the drop-down list. Add a prefix if you'd like. Now the system automatically sets up six dimensions with the convention application name dash dimension type. For this video, I'm only using entity dimension, which now exists, and now I will go on to establish the properties for that dimension. Properties are set in the lower section of the target application screen in application details, dimension details. This section is, in effect, a table that defines the properties of the load file and which columns to put them in for the table that will be used to load the dimensions. Of the 23 available, three are set as defaults, member which is stored as account, parent which is stored as entity, and the default alias which is stored in ICP. The remaining columns U01 through U20 can be used for other properties in the file. So for my entity file, which has four columns, I'm keeping the first three defaults, member, parent, and alias, and adding a geo property to store my attribute assignments. I've used U01 for this, and I have checked select property for each of the four columns in my file. Next step is to define the source system, which is file, since it's a flat file, and create a name for the source. Next, set up an import format. The import format defines the incoming file and maps the fields to the source of that to the target. To set it up, you'll define a name for the import format, the source, which is what we just created, the file type, which is delimited all data type, our file delimiter, which is comma, and finally, the target, which is our pbcs underscore seb dash entity. And for the mapping section below, the source column is basically the column headers if my file were to have them. Next is the field number, column number in the file from left to right. Each source should match the target on the right. Then we set up a location which defines the import format, the source, and the target. I like to put in something in the name for these items that identifies what they are, such as LOC for location. And create the data load rule. Mainly create a name for the rule and import the file to be loaded. Then set up the POV down at the bottom and set the data load mappings. Each of the columns in the source file gets mapped to the target. For this file, I've done a one-to-one -one mapping, no translations. However, data management may have problems with blank cells in the file, so you may either need to populate each cell in your file or do some kind of a replacement in the mapping, such as the SQL 
down in the left-hand corner. Now that everything has been defined, it's time to execute the load rule. Before executing, I would look at the POV at the bottom and confirm the load file that's being referenced is the one I want to load, and then click on Execute. Options are Import from Source, Export to Target, or both at once. There is also the option to set it up to run on a schedule. After executing the rule, I can check the data load workbench to review the results. This time we had a successful load. I ran the import from source and export to target all at once and I'm showing three goldfish, which means the import, validation, and export were all successful. If you don't get three goldfish, you can download and review the log file to troubleshoot the errors. Clicking on show will allow you to access the file. Once the issues are identified and corrected for, reload and you can review the results of your dimension load in the dimension editor.